Hey everybody! Welcome to the Jaded Stitches Show and happy holidays! <laughs> if you are making your gifts this year, then technically you can call yourself an elf. And every elf needs the proper attire, so this week we're going to show you guys how to make this really cute elf hat. <laughs> you can make this hat for yourself or anybody. You just need the measurement of their head circumference. And if the head you want to make it for isn't available, we have a standard head sizing chart on our website on the tools page. And we'll put a link to that in the description box down below. And if you need some help, you can check that out as a reference. I'm going to show you guys how to stripe your hat while carrying your colors and a really neat way to evenly decrease your stitches without all the annoying counting. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, head on over to the North Pole, and we will stitch ourselves up an elf hat together. In order to make our elf hats, you're going to want 100 grams of each red and green in a size 4 worsted weight yarn or a size 5 chunky, but you want them both to be the same size. That's for an adult hat. The smaller the hat you make, the less amount of yarn per color you're going to need. So 100 grams each color for an adult, 80 grams each color for a child, and for a very small head, maybe 75 or 65 grams. You're going to want a 5.5 millimeter hook or an I9, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, a measuring tape, four stitch markers or safety pins, a bell or a pom-pom for the end of it, and a needle and thread to sew it on with. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to begin with the brim. We're going to start with a slip knot, and if you're making a hat for an adult, you're going to chain seven. If it's for a smaller child around a tween's age, try six, and if it's for a very small child, try five. Once you have all of your chains, you're going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook and in each stitch across. If you had seven chains, you'll have six single crochet at the end of this row. If you had six chains, you'll have five single crochet at the end of this row. And if you had five chains, you'll have four single crochet at the end of row one. Once you're finished, chain one, turn your work, and for the rest of the brim, we are going to be working into the front loops, or I should say the back loops, the ones furthest away from you. So you see there's two loops running across the top that make up each stitch. We're going to use the back loops. It will always be the back loops, no matter what row you're on, and the back loop is always the furthest away from you. You're just going to single crochet into every single back loop all the way across, and whatever your stitch count was at the end of row one, it will be exactly the same for rows two and onward, however long you need to make the brim of your hat. At the end of each row, chain one, turn your work, find the furthest loop away from the hook, which is that one, and single crochet into each back loop all the way across for each row. You're going to make this brim as long as you need it to be to either wrap around your head or to measure the length that you need for whoever's head you're making it for. This is why I say you might want to have a little tape measure handy if you're making it for someone else. Anyway, I'll let you go and once your brim is long enough, come on back. The last row of your rib stitch brim is the row at which, when you wrap it around your head with a little bit of stretch, it fits comfortably. Or, if you're making it for someone else, with a little bit of stretch, it measures the circumference of the head you're making it for. So a little bit of stretch, not too much. For example, the circumference of my head is 22 inches, and if I slightly, lightly stretch this rib stitch brim, it equals 22 inches, no problem. If you have not already counted up your rows, take a moment to do that. Doesn't matter how many rows you have, but it will give you an idea of how many stitches you'll probably have in your first row of the upper part of your hat. For me, that's 60 rows. Then, if you haven't already, chain one at the end of your last row and bring your two short ends together. Careful not to twist your brim, so it shouldn't be twisted. 
And it does not matter if your little short tail is at the top or the bottom, that only means you did an odd or an even number of rows, and that does not matter. We are going to seam together the two short edges using the slip stitch. I'm going to use the furthest loop away from me still on the last row that I made and the corresponding chain of the foundation chain row on the other side. Keep your slip stitches nice and loose. You don't want to tighten up your seam. So you want to slip stitch through both sides. I'm using the furthest loop away from me on the last row and the corresponding chain of the foundation chain row. If you had six stitches in every row, you'll have six slip stitches. If you had five, it'll be five, four, it'll be four, and so on. At the end, you can decide whether or not you like your seam on the outside or if you'd like your seam on the inside, in which case you can flip it inside out. And I think I'll flip mine inside out, so my little bump seam will be on the inside, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Now we're going to work our first little row. It's a base row of single crochet. Because I have 60 rows in my foundation brim or the rib stitch brim that I made, plus one little extra that will be the seam, I'm going to chain one to begin this very first row of the foundation of our hat. And I'm going to single crochet right where that chain comes out of. Then I'm going to single crochet in the edge of every single row all the way around. So because I had 60 rows plus a seam, I should have approximately 61 stitches when I'm finished this foundation row for my hat. But if I'm one over or under, it really doesn't matter. What matters is that it still fits and it's comfortable. Once you're back round to the beginning, count up all those single crochets and make note of the number. That is the number of stitches you want to have in each of the rows going forward until we start to decrease. For me, that's 60. Before we close off this row, we're going to actually add in our second color. So grab your other color and make a slip knot. We're going to stripe this hat by carrying our colors all the way through it. And don't worry if you've never done this before because it's a pretty easy and efficient way to change colors on the fly. Take your hook and pass it through the first single crochet you made as if you were about to slip stitch. Before you do that, take the slip knot of your new color and put it on your hook. Don't make it too tight or too loose. Then grab the first color, so for me that's red, and just slip stitch back through everything. And now our color is attached. We're going to start with our second color now to do a first stripe. So we're going to chain one, and we're going to half double crochet in every stitch around. We're also going to stagger where we start and stop our half double crochets for every row so that we more or less keep our seam in the back of our hat. You want a half double crochet in the same stitch that you joined in, and if you want to work over your little short tail, go ahead. Try not to catch the second color, so let it just dangle there as you work, and don't worry about it. Now, just half double crochet in every single stitch all the way around, and I'll catch back up with you at the end. When you're back around at the beginning, make sure you count to check to see if you've got the right number of stitches, and that should leave you with the false stitch. We're going to skip that for this row, and every other row that begins with a chain one, half double crochet in the same stitches joining. That's going to help keep our seam more or less in the center. But before we do that, we're going to make sure that we carry up our yarn. So we want the first color that we're not using, or this goes for any row, the color you're not using, you want to pull it up and bring the color you are using underneath it. So you want to make sure that the color you're not using sits on top of the color you are using. This is all happening to the back of our work. Then. You're going to join with a slip stitch to the first half double crochet you made. Just ignore that non-working thread at the moment. And you have carried your yarn up the side. Every time you close a row, you need to carry up the yarn you're not using. That will help make sure it's always in the right position to use when you need to use it. Also, you're probably going to notice that your yarn wants to tangle on you a little bit. So another thing to do at the end of every row is just 
stop, take a moment, and make sure that your yarn isn't tangling. That will also save you a lot of time and annoyance <laughs> down the road. All right, for every even row, we're going to chain one, and instead of half double crocheting in the same stitches joining, we're going to half double crochet in the very next stitch. Then, half double crochet in every single stitch around, and I'll catch back up with you at the end. When you get back around to the beginning of the second row of your second color, you're going to half double crochet into the false stitch. This would be the stitch that the chain one originally kind of came out of, that we didn't use in the row before. Then you're going to make sure you carry up your yarn, so bring up the working color, or the color you're not working with. Make sure it's on top of your working color. And then join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet you made in that row. That way your color is carried, and you should still have the same stitch count all the way around. Alright, for the next two rows, you're just going to repeat rows one and two. So you start with chain one, half double crochet in the same stitch that you joined in, because this is an odd row, and then half double crochet in every single stitch all the way around, skip the false stitch, and carry your yarn, join with a slip stitch to the first half double crochet. Row four will be chain one, half double crochet in the next stitch, half double crochet in every stitch around, including the false stitch. Don't forget to carry your yarn, and then join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet. And remember to take a moment and untangle yourself <laughs> if that's what's happening with your yarn. And I'll see you at the end of row four of our first colored stripe. At the end of row four, because it's an even row, make sure your last half double crochet is in the false stitch. Carry up your non-working yarn as normal, so make sure it's sitting on top of your working yarn. And slip stitch to join with a slip stitch to the first real half double crochet that you made. Your stitch count should still be the same. And now we're going to change colors. So every row is going to be four, or every stripe should be four rows of the same color. We've done four rows. Now we're going to change up to our other color, which should be sitting right next to our current working yarn. So we're going to drop the green, pick up the red. You're going to chain one. And don't worry if you find that this, uh, when you change colors, that this loop pulls up a little bit. You can always tug it down a little bit, and it'll disappear after your first couple of stitches. So we're going to half double crochet in the same stitch as joining, because this is an odd row. And then you're going to half double crochet in every stitch all the way around. It's an odd row, so skip the false stitch. Remember to carry up your yarn and join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of that row. On your even rows, chain one, work into the next stitch all the way around and use the false stitch. Carry up your yarn and join with a slip stitch. And you just basically want to repeat the first rows we did with the green exactly the same way with the red. So I'll see you at the end of row eight, which will be the end of our second colored stripe. At the end of your last row of your second stripe, this is row eight of the stripe pattern um, that we've been working, make sure that you carry up the unworked color over top of the color you are working and join with a slip stitch to the first half double crochet you made. You should have something that looks like this. So your seam should be more or less staying in the center of the back of your hat. This is what happens if we alternate where we start and stop our rows. So that's why I like to work that one, two, one, two repeating pattern. Each of your stripes should be four rows deep, so it's easy to remember that row one of the stripe is always a chain one, half double crochet in the same stitch as joining, and the last row, which is always a row four or an even number, is always chain one, half double crochet in the next stitch, and then use the false stitch on your way back round. Always carry up your colors. It should look a little something like this on the inside of your hat. Go ahead and work four more colors now in the other, or four more rows in the other color. So we're switching back to our green in this case. You're going to chain one. It's a row one or an odd row of the pattern, so you're going to half double crochet in the same stitch that you joined in. And then remember to skip the false stitch on your way back before you carry your yarn and join with a slip stitch. So repeat the same four rows all over again in the other color, and then we will start to decrease. 
we're at the end of row 12 of our striping pattern or the end of our third stripe of color. Make sure that you've carried your non-working yarn all the way up the inside of your hat. And now you want to flatten your hat so that your seam, the back seam of your hat, is right in the middle. So you're kind of going to eyeball this. You're going to flatten your hat down so that you're looking at the seam in the very middle. You're going to grab your four stitch markers or safety pins and we're going to mark out four different points on our hat. So you can mark the first or last stitch of this row. It's basically the seam. So one stitch marker goes directly on the seam. Another stitch marker goes on this stitch that's roughly on the one side of your hat and then the other. This isn't exacting so you don't have to worry about it being an equal number of stitches in between. You just want to mark basically the four compass points. So your back seam, your side, your other side, and then we're going to flip it over. And you're just going to hold it nice and flat. See where the seam is on the back. So there's the seam on the back. And just come round to the front and pick a stitch which is more or less directly opposite your back seam. And there are your four points. You are going to decrease every single time you come up to one of these points in every single one of the rows from here on out. Now we're still going to maintain our four rows for every color stripe and we're still going to maintain our every other stop start row. So row one is a chain one, half double crochet in the same place, but you skip the, the false stitch on the way back. And the row two or the even rows as you chain one and work into the very next stitch but use the false stitch on the way back. You're still going to do that because you want to keep your steam in the middle back of your hat. But here is how we're going to work the decreases. So we're changing colors now. So you're going to pick up the color that you weren't using. We're going to chain one and instead of half double crocheting like we normally do, we're going to half double crochet the first two stitches of this row together. So it's a row one, so we would normally be half double crocheting in the same stitch as joining. So you're going to pull up a loop in that stitch, but you're also going to pull up a loop in the stitch right next to it. Wrap, pull back through all four loops on your hook, and you have just half double crocheted two stitches together, the first two stitches of this row, and that is the first decrease. You're going to half double crochet into every stitch all the way along until you get close to that other stitch that you marked at your second compass point. And I'll just hook up with you there. As you get up to each of the next three stitch markers, you're going to half double crochet up to the stitch that's marked, and you're going to half double crochet across that and the next stitch to decrease. So half double crochet, two stitches together at each of the next markers and that's how you do it. And then you half double crochet up to the next one, half double crochet, two stitches together at that marker, do the same thing at the third and I'll catch back up with you at the beginning of this row. When you finish that row, remember it's an odd row, so you're going to skip that false stitch and join with a slip stitch to the first stitch, which in this case is a half double crochet two stitches together. Every row from here on out will begin with a half double crochet two stitches together. And you are going to decrease four times in every row going forward. So that basically looks like this. You can either continue to get around, find your little compass point that we've marked out with our stitch markers, and you can track your finger upwards, which should always be a half double crochet two together stitch. It looks like this with two kind of crossing itself. And you know that you half double crochet two together over top of it. Or if that's tricky for you to see, you can take your stitch markers and move them up directly up every single row. And that way you know when you come around to it, you want to half double crochet two together over the top of that stitch marker. The important thing is that you decrease four times in every row you can continue to alternate your start stop rows, your even and your odd rows, so that you keep your seam in the back of your hat and change colors every four rows. It sounds like a lot to remember, but it's really not. Just take your time, remember where you are, 
and every row from here on out will decrease by four stitches. You want to continue this striping decreasing pattern now until you have between four and eight stitches left on your hat. And I will see you there. Remember, chain one and half double crochet two stitches together now to begin every single row. As you get narrower and narrower at the top, you may find that some of your regular decreasing points are getting closer and closer to each other and they're not all equally split up. So you can take a moment, if this is happening to you, to take out your little stitch markers and just reposition them at the new four equal points. You can do this at any time or you can do this for every row. It's entirely up to you. We want to keep our decreases somewhat equal but it's really not that important to the overall build of the hat. So you can just do what we did before, which is flatten your hat, make sure that your seam is somewhere in the middle, pick the two side stitches, and the stitch opposite the seam, and then just continue decreasing at those four locations until you're back down to four to eight stitches in total. And I'll see you there. Once you're down to between four and eight stitches, I've got eight here and I like the size of that. And I say between four and eight because everybody started with a different set of stitches and so everyone's decreasing is gonna take them to a different uh, final overall number. But uh, basically you wanna be down to a hat size that's about big enough to stick two of your fingers into. Then you can remove all of your stitch markers. We don't need them anymore. We are finished de decreasing and we are going to just work a few rows at this static number. So this new static number. Now it doesn't matter if you got to this point halfway through a row or if you finished a row like I did and you're changing colors. I just happened to be changing colors when I got down to that size. And now I'm going to continue I'm going to work another full stripe in my case, so another four rows. If you're halfway through a row when you get down to this uh, number, you can continue with that color and then change colors and work a full stripe, still working the same number of stitches. So we're not doing any more decreasing. We're just going to work these very few little stitches we have here, and I know it's a bit complicated because we've got two strings happening at the top and we're working in a very small spot. So just be patient and take your time. You're going to work half double crochets using the same staggered start stop method that we've been using all the way along, but you're no longer decreasing. So we're just basically elongating that narrow little part of the top of our hat so we can get a real elfish magical quality to it. So go ahead and work either another full stripe or another Finish the, the stripe you're on and then work another full stripe at that static number of stitches. And I will see you at the end. And don't fuss over numbers of rows or numbers of stitches. This is supposed to be a fun little hat. <laughs> so let it be fun. And don't worry about anything that you construe as a mistake because I guarantee you in a goofy hat like this, it won't be noticeable. Once you've finished working that last stripe or stripe and a half, whatever it wound up being for you, of the static number, we're just going to do a little bit of decreasing now with our other color to finish off the hat. So you're going to switch to your other color, chain one, half double crochet, two together in the first two stitches and all the way around. So if you've got four stitches or five stitches or six stitches, doesn't matter, just half double crochet two together, what you can, all the way around. We're just closing off this little end here. It's going to be pretty small when you finally get back round to the beginning, so do your best to slip stitch to join. At this point you don't have to worry about carrying your yarn, just leave it hanging out the top. And if you've got the nerve, <laughs> Do one more row of half double crochet all the way around. You don't have to half double crochet two together, but you can make that final little tiny few <laughs> stitches that you have a little bit longer. Like I said, this is a goofy little Christmas elf hat 
And because we're putting a pom-pom or a bell on the end of it, we want to just accentuate that silly little pointed tip. So two more rows in a different color. If you can manage, if you can manage that, that last one, go ahead. If you can't, don't worry. This is what we're going to do. So once you've slip stitched to join your very last row, and here it is here, you're just going to snip both strings. Fasten off by pulling the red one through or the last working yarn you had through and then you're going to pull them both into the inside of the hat. So you're going to stick your hook up through the top, grab both of those and pull them back down through the very top middle of the hat. Flip your hat inside out. And then you're going to knot these two ends together. Don't do it too tightly because you don't want to pull your tip out of whack. Uh, just knot them together two, three, maybe even four times if you're not sure about the slipperiness of your yarn. I'm going to do mine four times. And then you can weave those tails in. So weave the top two tails in and don't forget you probably have a tail down here, that little short one, that you started the whole thing with. So that's what the inside of your elf hat will look like. There's all of your carried yarn all the way up that back seam. And then you've got those two at the top. Weave them in, you want to use your yarn needle for that. And it can be messy, it doesn't have to be super fancy. This is the inside of a part of the hat that will really not see the light of day. <laughs> So take a minute to weave it in. If you've got a bunch of excess, you can trim it. And then we'll flip our hats right side out and add the pom-pom or the bell. Whether you're sewing on a pom-pom or bell, you want to take your needle and thread, match up the two ends, and tie a knot in them. Then make sure your hat is right side out. Grab the top of it. Run your needle under some of the stitches at the very top and then run it between the two threads, you can see that there, so that it catches the knot and anchors it to the top of your hat. Just to be safe, you can run a couple of quick stitches in the top of that hat. It's helpful if you've got the same colored uh, thread as you do yarn, but if you don't, uh, don't worry about it because it really won't be seen if you make your stitches small enough. Okay, then you can just sew on your bell or your pom-pom. If you're sewing on a pom-pom, remember you want to sew all the way through it. And if you're sewing the bell, make sure you've got a, a needle that can fit through that little hook that the bell has. Run it back and forth through the bell and through the top of your hat or the pom-pom and the top of your hat several times because you want to make sure it's on there good and tight, especially if you're making this hat for a young rambunctious person, <laughs> you don't want that bell coming off and you certainly don't want that bell getting swallowed by a pet or an even smaller child. So make sure it's on there good and tight. And once you think you've done enough stitches, you can tie a tiny little knot by running your needle underneath a piece of a stitch and then grab your thread and make a knot. Do this several times in the same place because once is never enough. Then you can poke it down into your hat, pull it out through a stitch several rows later and just snip your yarn or your thread I suppose. <laughs> And then you've finished off your elf hat. <laughs> and there you have it, a customizable elf hat just in time for the gift making season. <laughs> I hope you had fun making this along with me this week and we will see you guys all again soon on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week everybody. Bye! <laughs>